the half of locomotives. I'm Valdis. And I'm George. And the other two aren't here. Uh, how long have you got? <laughs> no, hang on, we, uh, um, we're all from Bedford originally. The band formed, but the band formed in Brighton when uh, me, uh, me and Chris and Greg were at university there. And um, we had a drummer there initially, but then we kicked him out and then got George in and all moved back to Bedford. Yeah. I've known him for the last 22 years of my life. Yeah, we're brothers, brother. aren't we? Yeah. Maybe, baby, I could be the one who could attempt to tie it down. Oh, first album. God, I, I, sure. I remember the first album I ever bought. It was a Beach Boys greatest hits when uh, I think I must have been about 11 or 12 or something like that. I mean, when you're really young, like when you're eight or nine or whatever, you like, you like, you like kind of, I like kind of, like poppy stuff that was out there. I didn't really, I can't really remember. Probably like Spice Girl or something. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't know. I can't. I can't. Really, I can't even really remember buying it. it to, actually, to be honest, you know, you know, the Oasis. What's Story Morning Glory? That's the first time I probably, like, probably really went out and bought mm -hmm. a band kind of music. If you know what I mean. The, the the first band that I probably got into when I first started to like music, other than what my parents listened to, like uh, Beatles and Stones, and that I bought Green Day's Warning album, and that came out, and I thought, wow, this is like, the best thing I've ever heard. Yeah. And uh, ever since then. Um, I quite like it. Yeah, been a, a big fan. That don't really like their new stuff quite as much. Yeah. yeah. I was I went to like garage and stuff like for ages like, before I got into bands and stuff when I was younger. And um, he, he he was playing the uh, Green Day Warning thing. I liked it, but I didn't want to. But I wanted didn't want to admit I liked it because I wanted because I wanted to think I liked all the garage stuff. And really, I really liked it. And then that kind of turns on the rest of Green Day as well. Yeah. So yeah, we bought all the other albums. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a few. Keep you going. <laughs> Keep you going. That kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah. He. Because obviously us living together, we used to listen to a lot of the same music. Um, so he bought Foo Fighters, uh, Colour and the Shape, yeah. and there's nothing Good left album. to lose in you know, those two albums. My so stereo is louder than his is. So I can just overpower all his ones. Those two albums yeah. are still like two of my favourite albums of, like, the, of recent years. Yeah. <laughs> the largest amount of stuff. I mean, like, our, the other two guys, um, they like a lot of stuff, uh, like Mystery Jets and Foles and uh, or things like that, Tudor Cinema Club. I quite um, like them. And uh, Mona and things like that. Like we played with Mona uh, quite recently, and then, like, you know, I'm really into Muse at the moment. I like, uh, I like Feist. Nice. Um, uh, I like uh, 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 Florence. I, I saw her quite a few times last year, and, like, she just, that album was awesome. I really, really like that. So I'm listening to a lot of them at the moment. And actually, I'm really happy because I bought uh, a Reading ticket to go on Sunday this year to see me because I've never seen them before. Yeah, exactly. Don't exactly. swear at me. What kind of stuff are you into at the moment? Me. I, I, to be honest, I, li I listen to, like, I, I try and keep up with what's going on, like, on Six Music and stuff like that, like with Cinema Club and Cage the Elephant. I quite like that. You know, they're a couple of their new songs. And I've, I, listened to, uh, I listened to their last album as well since I heard that. What's it called, that new song? You know, um, eating even on cloudy days. Um, whatever that's called, I like that. Yeah. And um, I, was, I was started listening to uh, some reggae as well, like uh, like uh, uh, Toots and the Maples and stuff like that recently. And I've been getting back into that. But yeah. then I listened to quite. I li I've been listening to jazz as well, like John Coltrane. I listened to an album of his uh, a few weeks ago. So I'm just constantly like dipping in and out yeah. of stuff. I like some dance music as well. Also, I like yeah. uh, Sub Focus. I quite like. I like Magnetic Man. You know, I've been, I've been listening. Also, I booked Bonobo tickets recently. Do you know them? No. So I uh, just like some like some producer guys, a bit like I don't know, even and chill out or whatever. I was listening to a bit of that because they're quite old, sort of catching up on their albums. So I just try and listen to quite a lot of stuff. But no, I'm not. Uh, it's all, all different things. Just another ride at the carnival, baby. Just we all listen to a lot of like, as individuals, we listen to quite varied stuff. Like I was saying, those two yeah. listen to particularly a lot of you know, up and coming stuff, like they're yeah. really into that. On the whole, it's not really my bag. He likes it a bit more, I'm yeah. probably the odd one out as far as that goes. But like, you know, when we all started playing, all our influences were different. Like I know Chris was mad, and still is on Jimi Hendrix and Clapton and stuff like that. And yeah. uh, so you know, that shaped his guitar playing. Valdis listened to you know, the most ridiculous amount of stuff. And then when I started drumming, you know, my I was listening to a lot of Green Day, a lot of Foo Fighters, and a lot of Queen. So you know, Taylor Hawkins, uh, Trey Cool. We like Taylor. the Beatles as well. We like all, all like the classic old ones. That's what yeah. that's what we all come together on. That's, that's your kind of 
Yeah, Your that's, what, that's what keeps us uh, keeps us from uh, falling out for each yeah. other. And then the thing is, we got all the, uh, the old school like stuff like that, and Oasis and whatever. And then like we like like Fat Boy Slim and Prodigy. Um, a Prodigy and stuff like that. So we just like we, we like to put a little bit of dancey stuff in yeah. to the uh, to the tunes as well. Just like better we can make a rock tune. We'll just yeah, just to keep twist up. Or whatever, just put some sound effects there, on it. There's a new track that we did. We recorded called "Don't Give Me Rock and Roll." Yeah, and like the we're playing tonight. Yeah, the 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 middle um, the middle leg of that and uh, the outro, whatever you want to call it, that's quite dance. Like the the influence for that is quite electronic. Yeah, um, but when we play live as well, because like obviously you've only got the four of us or whatever, you can't always put everything that you want to put on mm. over. To, even if it's not like just keyboard parts, if we want to like add like guitar stuff over the top of the recordings or whatever, or extra percussion or anything like that. That obviously like what makes up the dancey kind of effect that we try and put onto some of the tracks. Yeah. And the thing is like we just it's all try it's all about trying to make that more apparent live. And it's quite difficult to do that sometimes. Yeah. The, the tune, the lyrics and the, and the, and the instrumentation. Incredibly important. The tune, no. the lyrics, the, the drums, the instrumentation and everything else. So the whole, yeah, whole yeah. shebang. <laughs> so nothing much really, just the tune, the melody, the instrument. I think, what, what, yeah. I think what a lot of people relate to on first listen and in general is melody yeah, and sure. lyrics. You know, people on the whole, I think, tend to walk around, myself included, as you know, my main instrument's drums. I play a couple of other things, but usually you'll sing the song or you'll hammer tune your head, and that's the thing that yeah. will that will get you. The, if the melody's not strong, mm. then the tune. Or it's like it's like the sounds of the words because like yeah. sometimes if they don't make too much sense, but like it just kind of sounds good, I think. But then if like if you combine it so like you get a decent lyric which makes a lot of sense and the sound of the words are good and it all kind of ties together, everything ties together. That's when the best songs are when you got like the best yeah. arrangement for the best melody and the best lyrics to fit the sounds of the words all just yeah. mashed into one. If you know what I mean? Like if you had like all you need is love, yeah, which is like a nice statement, and you just said you're a stupid twat or something like that. It's just not going to be the same. So like, it's got to have like, it's, they've got to make a certain amount of sense. It's like, you know, um, yeah. I am the war. Of, I was reading an article about ridiculous lyrics today and like songs. And that has got some of the most ridiculous lyrics known to man. Yeah. It's a good tune. They sound really, they, yeah, they do sound, they work though, don't they? Yeah. yeah. You've got to be stupid like in a good way. Yeah. It does, it is, it is fucking stupid. It's fucking good. Frankly, baby. We put flyers on the side of bars. Yeah. One of which uh, you can see right here. Yeah, where well, one's already gone on the floor. Is that the one we gave to you? You already put on the floor. I trusted you with that. Like, it, is, <laughs> it, it is really hard to promote yourselves because like there are so many other bands doing it, especially in London. Like, you know. Greg's doing a great job on the old uh, yeah. tweeting. I, I think anyway. Like yeah, that is, like, we all have kind of areas within the band. Yeah. And, yeah, that, and Gr Chris does a lot of the emailing and management yeah. type things for us. Social networking is really yeah. important for like for stuff you can do as a band and be getting on with. Like it's to to try and make ways. I think the the most important thing this day in this day and age with the way the music industry is have to be a good live band. Yeah. If you don't play well live, then you're finished. I mean, I was reading an article about the band the other day who who did uh, reasonably well for their first album, then their second album only came in at number 11, then they got dropped and from their major label and stuff like this. And I, they said, you know, basically, unless you're a good live band, then you're finished. Then. Working with Adrian Bushby oh, yeah. well, it was awesome. Like when we did a couple of songs with uh, Adrian in Rack Studios in North London, and like when we actually you know, wanted to take on the project, it was awesome because you know he'd uh, recently done uh, Foo's album, that Echo Silence, Patience of Grace, and he did Muse's most recent album, which yeah. you know, in my humble opinion, is probably some of the best sound quality I've ever heard. In fact, actually, ever. he was working on that album when we were corresponding with yeah. his manager or whatever, and they were like, "Sorry, he's working with Muse at the moment. You'll yeah. have to wait." And we were like, "Come on, <laughs> God's sake, what's the matter?" That, that was a massive highlight doing that. And for me personally, I got a new drum kit last year, which was what is brilliant. Um, yeah, I can't really remember. I guess it's Adrian, isn't it? Did, uh, uh, did we do any good gigs last year? Sorry, let me reflect. Did we do any bad gigs? <laughs> no. Yeah, no. Not a single one. <laughs> last year was good for gigs. I mean, oh, yeah, like, what? Uh, I can't remember any in particular, but that's just usually the way it goes. But like, yeah. it's the, the live, you know, we've, we've been a band for, for a while now. And the entire time you work on 
your live performance and you're yeah. getting tighter and tighter, you know, getting singing better, you get playing better, you know, everything just to try and get that performance tight as hell. And yeah. usually, you know, we, we've had uh, we've had really good feedback on it. Yeah. From the people that have seen us, like we don't know, they'll just come up to us uh, at the end of the gig and say it's great. And, you know, that's uh, just for anyone to. I've think got one. I've got one. I've got one. We supported Brother at the end of last year. Oh yeah. We supported Brother a couple of times. Have you heard of them? Yeah. 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 Uh, we sp yeah we supported them at the end of last year in uh, Nottingham. That was good. Yeah. That, that was, was good. good. That one of the, it was one of the bigger crowds we played to as well. It's always nice to go to crowds where it's not just your fucking parents watching or something like that. Yeah. And like it's just like it, it, it was. We didn't know anyone. It was nice to kind of like they all seemed to like it afterwards. Yeah. We were going around talking to everyone. And, uh, giving away our yeah. bloody CDs and all that kind of stuff, and it was just nice to see it like seem to go down all right with them. Yeah. And then we did it again in, in Cambridge. When was that? It was this year? Wasn't Cambridge it? this year? Yeah, yeah this year. A month or so ago. That was, that was really little cool. comments. It's it, it, it's well. it's great to play to a crowd of people that you don't know and have a good reaction from it because you know if you you know uh, we've had. Uh, a certain group of people that have been very loyal to us over the past few years, and you know, really, you know, uh, been great to us, yeah. and which is fantastic to have that sort of core group. But then, when see it you know, expand, yeah, and then w w yeah. but when you play to people that you don't know, it's really is sort of testing how good you actually are. So they're not just going to say, yeah, they're, they're, they're not going to say, yeah, it was great, or yeah, you know, we really enjoyed it, or whatever. You will be able to tell well you're playing those songs if they're coming across well, like there, there are some things that in those gigs that you know, have made us think, you know, well maybe we should change this, maybe we should kick that out, maybe yeah. we should do this instead, just to try and you know, get that live performance. I was better. supporting Mona as well, yeah, just before I forget, so I was doing the conversation to drift too far, a lot cool. you have to drop it, yeah, I've got to plug so many things. It wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't last year, I'll give you that, it was this year, it was still yeah, no, that, was, that, that was a couple of weeks ago. That was in Bedford, that, that yeah, where we're from. Hometown gig, uh, that was fun. Yeah, yeah, that was nice. Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah it was, again, because it was like a bigger crowd as well. It's nice to get in the support slots with yeah. slightly more up-and-coming bands. Yeah. So, like, all the bigger bands, if you know what I mean. So you can get more people. Yeah, you can to play, play more ears. Yeah. 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 Rather than just like, no, because if you, if you go and play on your own somewhere and you're, and you're still up-and-coming, it's yeah. not going to be as many people. Yeah. But they just they do all right for you. Yeah. <laughs> just another ride at the carnival, baby. Just another we, we found this number and we saw um, like well, this, this ridiculously large list of names and like variety of like acts that he's worked with and so we thought if this guy can do all of this then you know he obviously knows how to handle pretty much anything we're going to throw at him. He was really good and, as well. You know, he was, he was great and you know we, we spent three days in Rack and he mixed it at his place, you know, he worked on a, a couple of mixes for it and it was done. And yeah. You know, they, they so have you finished working with them now? No, oh, no. We we did those two tracks last year, and now we've um, recorded four more so far. Like finished four that we've sent to him to mix, uh, which he's literally working on as we speak. Uh, Hopefully, probably anyway. Probably have <laughs> opened them off the fire. Um, yeah. So he, he's got those four tracks at the moment, and we're hoping to have. Oh, he said he was going to have them back this month. So, you know, and he, he's recently had uh, a second child, quite young. So you know. It's obviously got other things on yeah. his mind, so I'm not going yeah. like, to call him up and badger him all the time. We're almost as important yeah. as his children, <laughs> but like, not he's, quite. Yeah. He, he's working on that now, and that is awesome to have him on board. I mean, you know, The Resistance wasn't, it's not my favourite music album, Black Holes, personally, but yeah, the sound quality on it is just unbelievable. And like, he, he did a mix for... Um, Band of Skulls. Yeah, Band of Skulls, and like, I, I really like that track, Fires, and the mix he did of it was massive yeah and like this guy knows what he's doing he's great he's guy. Been yeah. 20 years isn't he? Yeah. You, you, you definitely right. know Hopefully. This is our guitarist Chris, just entered the room. Come and sit, is the camera we're wide enough to fit him all in? We're looking hey. to hopefully have the whole thing done maybe the end of this uh, year maybe? Hopefully by the end of this year by the time we're, I think we're ready to release it. Cool. Welcome to the crowd. Have you got uh, have you got any ideas of when the album is going to be uh, available? Well, provided we're going to be in the same room to record it by um, the end of the year. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Really. Probably just letting the McCartney so I can just do nothing and just fucking take some credit for it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Uh, uh, alive or not? They have to be alive. Uh, Working with these guys. <laughs> 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 I don't know if they're uh, uh, yeah, with the dance producer or something. You can work out some of the, yeah, the more dancier hooks. They'll be good. Yeah. Are they going to start sounding? 
to see someone else's uh, someone else's on it. Because I'm sure there'll be stuff like lift and lift. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I don't know. Name wise, I mean, who do you think? I don't know. Someone, that's, a that's a hard one. I don't know. Chemical Brothers or something like that would be great. They're pretty established. So yeah. Watching. Someone who's rich, yes, we can get on tour with them and make a of money. I'd that probably nice. get Taylor yeah. Hawkins and Matt Bellamy in a room. Then and that'd be me done. Taylor Hawkins and Matt Bellamy. They're dreamers, idealists. Yeah. 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 They were, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think they were rich. <laughs> Unless Adrian was there, it's just kind of split him up. Yeah, they've got a common friend in common.